what we should be eating up against what you may be eating. Unfortunately for the poor chickens, they taste so good. <laughs> Canadians are dining out more than ever before. Even if leafy greens make the menu, they often miss the plate. So I'm kind of being a hypocrite, but definitely we need to, uh, you know, change the mindset of, of how we eat. To that end, the new food guide recommends Canadians be more mindful of their eating habits, cook more food at home, and sit down to enjoy it with family or others. To make it all easier, forget serving sizes and food groups. Now it's all about proportions. I was thrilled to see this food guide. Uh, I've been a very vocal critic for many, many years and never would ha I guess that they would change as much as they have. Using evidence-based reviews instead of industry input, the new food guide warns against eating processed and prepared foods high in salt, sugar and saturated fats. The removal of fruit juice and sugar-sweetened milks as parts of a healthy diet is a very important thing for our kids, especially in our schools, and especially with the rise of childhood obesity here in Canada. I worry in case it makes parents feel bad. The day's lunch being served up at this Toronto elementary school is vegetable curry. The nonprofit running this food program likes the new food guide, but says veggies and fruits aren't cheap. Where we fall short is we don't ensure, we don't do enough in this country to ensure that each Canadian child has access to the kind of food that we are recommending for them. Add to that, many families are up against a time crunch. It's very easy to make pasta and sauce, you know, and be on your way, macaroni and cheese, that sort of thing. But I think with a little guidance and a little information, I think it's very achievable. A food makeover that Canadians will chew over for years to come. Christine Birak, CBC News, Toronto. Of course, at the end of the day, the food guide is just recommendations from the federal government, but these changes will have a major impact on what millions of Canadians eat. First, the food guide is taught in schools right down to kindergarten. And for many Canadians, it's the first contact they'll have with ideas about healthy eating, and that will have a subtle impact throughout their lives. But the guide also informs meal planning in regulated institutions. That means food is likely going to change in hospitals, prisons, military bases, retirement homes, long-term care facilities, and yes, daycares. 